Hi, I'm Daphne Good here in downtown Duncan at the Cowichan Valley Museum and Archives, which is located here in the heritage designated train station, which was built in 1912. Welcome to Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, a summer camp for young adults that is uplifting for many, fascinating history of the Cowichan Valley and how to make a difference volunteering. All that on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Well, many people in Duncan lament the loss of the historic Chinatown. It's okay. It's coming alive now at the Duncan uh, Couch and Valley Area Museum and Archives. And with me is Catherine Gagnon, who is the curator. You've just done a marvelous job of bringing the Chinatown of this area alive. And we could start perhaps with some of these artifacts that look just fascinating. Mm. Thank you, Daphne. Yes, it was very exciting to bring these out of the collection. Uh, they've been in storage for a while. Um, but also, apart from the ones that we brought out of the collection, I've been working with the Chinese community as well. So up here we have a wonderful uh, loan of their lion's head. That's mm. the one they use for the dragon dance. So that's a really lovely thing to have uh, on view here in the museum. Well, I see an opium pipe, of course, synonymous with Chinese culture in Victoria as well as the Cowichan Valley, Catherine. What are some highlights that you'd like to tell us about? Well, one of the things I really enjoyed was arranging these artifacts according to the areas that they were found. Um, so for example, we have a grouping from Mount Sicker. And Mount Sicker was a famous copper mine um, at which uh, so many Chinese people worked. So all the evidence of their life was there, soy pots and mm -hmm. whiskey bottles and medicine bottles. So that's what I've done. And then there's another one from um, the uh, Island Lumber Company uh, and also from Chinatown itself. So when Chinatown was being raised and and the materials were being taken down, there were so many artifacts found there. So those are, are in this cabinet as well. It's excellent that they've been preserved so well. So we see the cultural history and the social history, and of course the industrial history. There were so many people working in the mines and lumber mills. Uh, then we go to these interesting lanterns. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this uh, is a, a portable altar, and this was found uh, at the site of Su Lam Bing. Now, he was somebody very important in Chinatown. He was called a, the, the Chinatown boss. He had a kind of employment agency, and that's because um, the Chinese were were subjected to uh, a head tax mm -hmm. and the um, maximum that went up to was $500 and in order for people to come to, to Canada that head tax had to be paid. So Su Lam Bing was uh, the person who paid that and eventually people worked for him and paid that off. But they had they lived um, in, in Chinese rooming houses and so there were a lot of artifacts that were found when, when those houses were taken down eventually and this was one of them. And it looks almost in perfect condition. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, it is. It's, it's in very good condition. Apparently it was used for uh, weddings. So apparently these candles have male and female um, features. Um, but yeah, it's in, in very good condition. And just tells us a little bit about uh, what life was like um, mm -hmm. for this particular community. Catherine, I know, of course, the Dunsmuir coal operation was very close to the Cowichan Valley, so I imagine there were plenty of Chinese employed there. Was the Chinese settlement fairly substantial in size for this area? Yes. Um, I heard recently that it was as much as 1,000 people, and there was a really strong tie to Victoria uh, as well. So there were a lot of people here, and of course, um, like so many Chinese men, they were had to find work after the railway was built. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, Mount Sicker was a huge mining concern from about 1897 to 1907. So that drew a, a huge number of people. Um, and Chinatown was based uh, on providing services to, to, in fact, Duncan grew um, when uh, Mount Sicker was, uh, it was active and providing services and goods and things like that. So that's what helped uh, d um, uh, establish Chinatown at that time. Right. Well, you're paving the way for us to talk about 
the best customer service, I think, in the Cowichan Valley was provided by Charlie on Tom. Now, we have his singer sewing machine here. You were telling me earlier that he actually visited the laborers and the workers so that they could have some fine suits made. That's right. He would go up to Mount Sicker and he would take orders for suits. He would do all the measuring and he would come back to his shop and make up those suits and then deliver them. <laughs> <laughs> and that really reminds me of the industrious nature of Chinese people as well. Um, well, you know, if you can imagine really having very little when you come here and then establishing businesses was an incredible feat, mm -hmm. you know, to have to have very little and to work very hard. So um, another famous business here was the Duncan Steam Laundry. And we're very lucky here at the museum to have a few artifacts from that. But also, I know members of that family. So um, Yoi Wong, who is featured in this picture of the Duncan Steam Laundry, um, his children still live here. And uh, they were great. They've provided us with all kinds of information and photos. Now, one of the best things that came out of that um, was that they showed me their mother's head tax certificate. Wow. Now, they have that, but they let me copy it. And so I have a copy of that head tax certificate here, which That's is a fascinating thing to see. An amazing keepsake. I have to say, uh, the display, the way that the museum is uh, laid out, is just so interesting and fascinating to see the work that it was done by one of uh, your young students. Oh, well, yes. The, in particular, that's the, um, the video that we have. And uh, it's just a way for, we have a lot of images um, of Chinatown, and it's fascinating. So I gave her all of the images, and she um, used it in an iMovie program and added some music to it. And, and it just uh, really brings life you know, into the exhibit as well. So I'm just delighted that, uh, that she was able to do this for us. We'll take a quick break right now outside the Cowichan Valley Museum and Archives. But when we come back, it's important to remember the efforts of countless volunteers. The world would probably stop turning if it weren't for them, especially in places like hospitals and care centers and even museums. It's important we say thanks to them for their efforts and you'll meet a volunteer later who is giving back. We'll also take you to a camp for young adults, which is truly uplifting. Ellen Lukaitis has been volunteering for 24 years, once a week. Incredible. What's the fascination with volunteering here, Ellen? Oh, I just, I just love it here. It's, uh, I'd never even been in here before, and, uh, and my husband volunteered me. He was on, on city council, and this was one of the committees he was on, and he came home from a meeting one evening and said, I volunteered you. And I, it's wonderful. I've been here ever since. So, so that was yeah. easy. It and was easy, yes. Yeah. You and met the, many other people since you've been here and worked with some of the children in the school's program? Oh, yes. We did, I do the school programs and I work on the front desk, and you meet people from all over the world. It's wonderful. I just love it. Yeah, I just love it. And you're going to be in the Christmas lights uh, oh, event, yes, I, I understand. that every year here and I'm the nurse in the, in the hospital room because I was a nurse so and I wear the uniform in there and uh, I have a patient in bed who I have to cure by eight o'clock in the evening <laughs> when the fireworks start and uh, so it's, it's all good fun. <laughs> Here in the First Nations Gallery, you will learn a lot, like I have, that the Cowichan, as an example, is representative of the largest of the tribes in British Columbia. Catherine, I'm embarrassed that I didn't know that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is one of the fun things about coming to exhibits, is you learn things that you didn't know before. Yeah, exactly. Now, behind us, you will see a great view. This is a view from your window when the North American Indigenous Games happened a while ago. That's right. In 2008, we had the 
North American Indigenous Games, and uh, there were, oh, I think 5,000 people walking in the street in the Parade of Nations. It was fascinating, but I'm lucky that in this heritage building, I have a balcony, and it's the only balcony uh, on the whole street. <laughs> so the media people were looking up at me going, can I come up and take a picture? <laughs> so they did, um, but I just got this you know, wonderful view and a wonderful shot of, of an important event. Of course. Now, the Cowichan people are well reflected here. We have uh, some fascinating photographs, lots of artifacts. Can you give us an overview? Yes, yeah. Um, well, the after the North American Indigenous Games in 2008, I applied for a grant um, from the Heritage uh, Legacy Fund of BC, and I was able to do this exhibit to feature some of the wonderful artifacts that we've collected over the years basically through pioneer families. That's how these things came to us. So um, baskets and uh, some stones and, and of course art as well. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Thompson case, um, that is from the a donation from the Thompson family. And they were very good friends with uh, master carver Simon Charlie. So it's wonderful to have uh, his artwork featured here in the museum. Absolutely, and there's some stunning pieces. Uh, over here we have trading, You, they're, they're like Bottles and yeah. vessels. That's that's right. So, um, in order to make money, uh, some of the First Nations people would take milk bottles or medicine bottles and weave around them, and then and then use them as trading items, which is how they came to be um, in the possession of uh, pioneer families, who eventually left them to us. And how was that cooperation between pioneer families and the Cowichan people? Um, it's really interesting to read accounts because there there was a lot of cooperation in in the early days. There were um, uh, there was a lot of uh, help and knowledge shared, and uh, there seemed to be a lot of um, friendships that I read about in diaries. So it's very, very interesting. It's a complicated history and something well worth exploring. Uh -huh, and a good place to explore is right here <laughs> at the Cowichan Valley Museum and Archives. I think the best thing about a lot of museums is a, is a little general store. General stores are just treasures, and that's where we're going next. Something cost 10 cents. That was a long time ago, and there's the old cash register to prove it. There's a 1909 calendar in here and a 1920 phone book. And even better than that, you could see a lot of wonderful artifacts, baking tins, sewing notions, and all sorts of things that the community have brought in. This general store inside the Cowichan Valley Museum and Archives probably would not exist if it weren't for the great contributions from the community, Catherine. That's right. We have a very supportive community that uh, bring in artifacts still every single week. But when we were setting up in particular, people brought in their wonderful, wonderful artifacts to create a, an exhibit like this. <laughs> so there were a few general stores, I'm guessing, in Cowichan. Oh, well, there were a few general stores and of course that was the only place not only where you could buy things that you needed everything from you know buttons to bear traps <laughs> but also where services were provided it'd be a post office sometimes a dentist yeah that's mm. the kind of thing that happened at a general store <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that idea and there aren't very many of them left in BC every once in a while you'll run into one in a small village that that's right um, and uh, you just see so many things of course so many uh, shops specialize now of course um, but this really had to have everything because it was the often the only place where people could purchase what they needed. Right. Well, there's just a huge number of wonderful items here that we could talk about. Do you have a favorite in here? You must at sometimes just feel like you're in a treasure trove and once in a while something comes through the front door you think, we've never seen one like oh, that. that. That happens uh, frequently and when it has a provenance, a, a very good story behind it, a connection to our local history, it's even better. Uh, one of my favorite objects in here is something that looks like a light bulb <laughs> and when we have students in here, we ask them, you know, what, does, what, what do you think that is? Oh, isn't it a light bulb? And finally, they, they don't ever, ever guess what it is, but it's a fire extinguisher. It would have had gas in it, it probably still does, and uh, you would break it and that would be the end of it, of course. <laughs> but yeah, but it just looks so much like a light bulb. <laughs> People it really does. It is. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. Speaking of which, you do have education programs for children. Yes, I mean, that's a really uh, important uh, part of our work here at the museum is the grade threes um, have a curriculum where they focus on pioneer life. Well, when they come here, we have all that tangible evidence and they just get so excited to see how clothes were washed and that you took a bath in the, in the kitchen and, <laughs> and things like that. So it's really fun to show them these things and what life was like, you know, 100 or so years ago. Kids go to summer camp. 
camp, why not young adults? A story that reflects on a summer of fun for late teens and young adults is coming up, and you would not believe what they found in the old Duncan Garage showroom before it became a live entertainment hotspot. All that is coming up after the break. A few years ago, Camp Shawnigan started their camp for young adults, specifically for those aged 19 to 25. Next, we'll meet a camper who has truly benefited from his years at camp. Here we are at the Cowichan Valley Museum and Archives with Catherine Gagnon, the curator. And she hears this a lot of the time. How can this be in a museum? I have one at home. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's true. People say that all the time, but we collect from all eras. And uh, so that life is very well represented. But I do use that um, when I do my grade three pioneer program. And I ask the children, well, have a look around here and what things are similar to your house? And it's amazing how many antiques people have in their homes. So, so there really is a, a reason why we have things in the museum and people have them in their homes. And it's, it's yeah. Uh, you know, it's because people collect things and, and they hold on to family heirlooms. And preservation of history is all important. So we said you can bring in items to the museum here. That's why they have such a rich collection is from that kind of support. Right, that, Catherine? That's right. And, and so these artifacts that we have, in particular with the school programs, that help us to show children, for example, and adults, what life was like. So one of the things we talk about is where did water come from? And what, how did, where, was there plumbing? <laughs> no, there was no plumbing. So one of the artifacts I use is, is this... Um, chamber pot, you know, and it's a sensation with grade threes because <laughs> they simply can't believe that something like that is used. Or something like this commode chair, which mm -hmm. you would have to be quite well off to have something so nice. <laughs> so it's really fun to, ha to have preserved these and uh, to use them to, to explain how uh, uh, the history of uh, life here. We have a lovely dining set and dining area, even some children's toys and blocks. The thing that scares me is when I look at that stove and I think, oh, thank goodness for modern implements and appliances because it just it just screams a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. And that that is one of the points about pioneer life is that nothing was easy. So not only did it you have to put wood in the stove, you had to cut down the wood, you mm. know. There's a reservoir uh, in that stove to heat water because there was no running hot water. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty of having these artifacts is to say, this is what it was like, so appreciate what you have now. <laughs> exactly, that's a good way to look at it. i looking at this old gramophone. It reminds me of his master's voice, this great huge uh, cone coming out. Well, that's one of the ways that we illustrate how things worked without power, because you would, there was a, you would um, wind this, there's a handle where you'd wind it, and then there are cylinders that are made of hard wax that have one song on them. So, and they sound very creepy now. <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of the ways when we talk about how people entertain themselves when they weren't working, this is one of the things that they would use. Well, we're off to see a really old typewriter and talk a little about hunting and fishing of the old days with Catherine Gagnon, who, no surprise, was fascinated by museums from the age of 12. Many people in the Cowichan Valley know the Duncan Garage. Here's a wonderful old photograph, 1910 to 1983, and of course it's still going as a great live performance area, Catherine. So this reflects somehow the Duncan Garage. That's right, because um, you know it was a, a garage for many years. It, it was an amazing part of our history because at one time everything was located there, the ambulance, the hearse, the taxi, <laughs> you know, everything. So when it eventually, when the business um, uh, was no longer in existence, then a lot of these artifacts were donated to the the museum. So the building is there, it's been beautifully preserved, but we ha also have artifacts here from the building when it was a, a, a car garage. Including an Underwood typewriter. Those are like soldiers. They they <laughs> almost never quit. Yeah, and we have quite a collection of typewriters because you're absolutely right, they were made to last. <laughs> so um, it's lovely to have some of these things in our collection. That's our show, and please remember, we love your story ideas. We are producing for the Cowichan Valley, so if you have any story ideas, Facebook us, tweet us, you can email us, or stop us on the street sometime. 
Thanks very much for watching. This is the Couch and Valley Edition, seen every Tuesday and Thursday night and Wednesday and Friday daytime. Bye-bye. See you next time. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network, Men's Wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co., Menswear and Accessories, Hair Services provided by Salon J.